The video is going to be long, so let's keep the intro short. In this video, I will show you a short review and demo and looks with these two little girls. I mean, look at them, how tiny they are. It's literally a keychain and the big palette, the Mist Witch from the brand Shall We Makeup. This is a Chinese indie brand. I'm really into Asian beauty, Chinese makeup at the moment. And when I saw these on Monolith Shop, I, I just wanted to grab them. So they look beautiful because I was actually like pinpointed to this uh, Mist Witch palette by my friend Diana from Channel Blush uh, Frenetic. And she was like, this is so your color story. And it truly is. So I thought let's try all of them here in this video so you will get one look with this guy. This is the uh, Circus Quad. Then the second look is going to be with the Liana Quad, which is this mud one. And the look that I'm wearing here for the intro is done by the Mist Witch palette. I will mention this in the outro too, but I mean, double is better. Um, if you want to try Shall We Makeup or you are now curious and you, you want to try it before you see the application, you can save 10% with my code Ella Kinkley. And I also have a link in the description box. It's an affiliation thing. So if you use one of these, the link or the code, then I will get some money from your purchase. But of course, wait for the application. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen the looks, but now stop the ramble. I'm a bit in a time struggle uh, this morning. So let's head over to look number one. Okay, let's do the first look. And this is probably the smallest quad that I've ever seen. It's a freaking keychain. Like, what the fuck? Like, look at this. But look at the color story here inside. This is a cool toned dream with golds and reds. I am totally, I don't know. I'm, when I opened this the very first time, I was very, very in love. I immediately wanted to use that. And um, so we do this. And by the way, can we just tell about that cool um, metal thing here? It just looks really, really good. But I'm honest with you, I was very, very shocked how small this is. Let me just find something I can um, compare it to. So look at this compared to MacFix Plus. Like, what the fuck? But um, it's a mini palette. They do have mini palettes. So this is the first one. This is the circus palette. And here, of course, you have the swatches. And because the swatches are so pretty, here you have a close-up of them. I mean, look at them. They are really, really pretty. The thing just is that the brushes I usually would use for a look do not fit the pants, so we have to be a bit more creative here. Starting with the lightest shade, which is Earth. And I do apply this in the crease first but I do diffuse it up towards the brow so that I can create a nice transition. I went into that color a second time and I'm just building up that a bit. I wanna have it more intense. Although I really liked the first blend. So with a smaller brush, I now go into that dark brown that's called Juggling. And I do apply this in the outer V area. and bring it slightly inwards. I then go back with the first brush, but no additional product. And I do the fuse this edge a bit more. I'm now tapping into the shade Clown. And I do apply this here on the inner crease part, but I also flick it onto the lid. And then I slightly bring it outwards. This is a very pigmented shade and it applies so different to the swatch. I now go into that gold shade called Lion and I start tapping this in the center. And then I bring it to the red, but I don't want to cover the red. I'm also bringing it outwards where the dark shade is. I'm back with a bit more of the red and I do apply this here on the inner part again and flick it on top of the gold to create a more seamless blend. So I feel like liner can benefit this look. So I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Pillow Talk liner that has cat hair on it. 
and I do apply this on the upper waterline and also on the lower waterline. I'm now tapping into the juggling shade again. I do smudge that along the lower lash line. And with the same brush, I'm also going into the red again. And I do smudge this in the center and flick it in and outwards. I just want to have like a tint of the red. Since this palette does not have something for the inner corner, I'm tapping into my Lemonhead LA Space Case and I'm using this shape. This is a Sugarfish. And I do apply this as inner corner highlight. And also a bit on the lower lash line and the crease as per usual. And this is now the finished look with the Circus palette. I'm honest with you, um, I mean, it's just one look. And let's be honest, you will probably not end up with a lot of like variations of looks. You can use only two shades or do a one shade look. Yes, 100%. But you will end up with something like that all the time. And I don't know how to say this, but um, I'm totally here for it. And I am really loving this, which makes me excited for look number two. Okay, for look number two, I'm using the other small palette that I have. This is the Liana one. I think it's also that small. They're so cute. And this color story is a bit different. So you have um, a mossy green matte, then a very intense sparkly whitish gold. Then this, which um, at first sight actually looked a bit like the red in Circus, but it's not. First of all, this is a duochrome multi. I would say duo because it shifts um, from this like copper shade to green. And then you have a dark green shimmer shade. And of course, since they are so pretty, here you have the close up swatches. I didn't mention this in the first swatch that I did with the first mini quad. These are um, on top of no primer. This is not what I do, but I did use a stencil and I do build them up two times, mainly to fill in the stencil. Usually I would do my finger, rub it a bit and then make one swipe. But since I have to coordinate with the stencil, I usually build them up two times. And just in comparison here, this is um, the circus quad from the first look and this is the other quad, completely different vibes. For my liking, one matte is not enough. That's why I will pull in another palette for the mattes and a palette that I actually haven't touched this year, which is shocking because I love it so much. The Danessa Myricks Groundwork palette and I'm very excited for the new version that will be coming this month. And I will be using um, mainly, like not mainly, I will be using the mattes from this, combining it with the mattes in here. And I think about doing something very grungy, intense maybe, by adding some of the black cream. So let's just see where my creativity rolls. So I'm starting off with the stone cream from the Groundwork palette. And I do apply this in the crease and transition area. Cool thing is the stone color, as you can probably tell, does turn slightly green on me, because in this type of gray, there are a lot of greens in there. And together with my weird skin tone, it turns into exactly the shade that I want to have for the matte from the Shall We palette. So I'm now using the shade Trap Queen from the Liana palette. And I do apply this directly into the crease. Oh shit. Do you see the sparkle on my eye? Since the pans are so small, I kind of messed up and some sparkles went into the matte shade. Oh no. Maybe sparkle um, crease is now the vibe. I'm always with you. <laughs> kind of like this. So hopefully it does look the same on the other eye. This is actually my biggest critique point here. Um, I like the, th uh, the thought of mini palettes. I think this is very genius and if you have um, been on the website before, they do sell their palettes normally in a regular size and in a travel size. For the third palette, for example, which is uh, the Mist Witch one, you can buy a mini travel palette or the same as normal big one. And the price difference is like 40% like less in the travel size. By the way, I just need to flick off some of this glitter. It's, it's not translating the same on the other eye. Um, I like that fact, but the problem is just the pans are so small that you will end up mixing a bit. 
That's um, that's a bit of a bummer, actually. But I, I again, I like the idea so fucking much that I don't mind. You know what? Let me do it with this black. So I'm going into Tourmaline. T Tourmaline? Yeah. Um, the cream side in the Danessa Myricks one. Do you tap this here on the outer parts? Just want to have a slightly black base. And then I just work it in. Start to blend a bit with the edge of my brush. And bring it slightly into the crease. So I'm now tapping into the shade Full Bloom, which is the dark green one. By the way, do you get Christmas vibes from that palette too? Um, somehow in certain lighting I have a Christmas vibe, in others I don't. It's, it's weird. I kind of have a jungle vibe. But the green goes here on the outer part on top of the black. Oh boy. Is there a big difference between the swatch and the black base? A bit, I think. A tiny, tiny bit. I like applying shades like this over a black base because they just... They are much more intensified. It's a very interesting shade of green, not gonna lie. This is definitely more a... Green with some golden specks, golden yellowy specks going on. Usually, not my vibe. But this is mixed very, very well. So I'm going back with the brush I used, the matte from the Shall We palette, and I just blend a bit more since I applied some of the green into the crease. Next up, I tap, of course, into the In Flames shade, and I apply this on the rest of the lid. And then I just swipe it over the green to have a blend. These metallics are very soft and very, very like spreadable, if that makes sense. They, they go on very creamy. But for example, the golden shade in the Circus palette, that was more on the flaky side. These two shades so far are definitely not. They are more on the creamy um, butter side. I tap back into the matte from the palette again and I just go through the crease once more. I want to use some liner again and this time I'm using the Urban Decay 24 7 Glide On Pencil in the shade Stash because this actually has a brownish green tint going on so this matches this whole look perfect at least in my imagination. I'm also going back with the black uh, cream shade from the Danessa Myricks palette. I'm now going into the Trap Queen shade again and I do blend this beneath. I'm now going into Silver Snake. This is more um, crumbly and not as, you know, as, as buttery, as creamy as the other two. But I apply this on the inner corner. And whatever is left, I to kind of spread here around the eye and also take some on top of the red, just a bit. And this is now the finished look with this super cute Liana palette. I'm honest with you, the only step that I do kind of regret is applying this, um, what was it called? The Silver Snake shade also on the brow bone because it is just so intense and because of its flakiness, it's way too much in my opinion, but I kind of like, I like, okay, the more I look at it, the more I like it, but I think this might be a bit too much for a lot of people. So let's head over now to the final look with the Mist Witch palette. Okay, look number three, palette number three. And actually I'm quite sad that this is now the last one because, ah, uh, look at how pretty this looks on the outside. This is the Mist Witch palette. And <clears throat> this does come, and this is super interesting, in this size, which is the big one. And then there is a travel size. It's the same palette, but with smaller pans. And I think it's like half the price or something like that. I do actually like this concept of having a full size version of a palette and for less price, a mini version. It is the same thing that Viseart did a couple of years ago when they only had their um, Slim Pro palettes that had massive pans and they were like 80 euro or even 90 or something like that. And then they took these palettes, 
cut the um, like the amount in the pants into half and the price was less than half which is just so cool to yeah to just try a certain brand and maybe you just like smaller eyeshadows maybe you have a storage problem and now I'm rambling but I love this concept actually a lot and look at these images it's like a like wooden house and then you have a cat and you have mirrors and a lamp and this um, I am too lazy to google now the English word for that a cattle I think it's a kettle tell me what this is with the green smoke but it's like which supply let's just say that you get with this palette also a pack of stickers that I actually threw away because I don't use them and the palette comes packed into brown parchment paper and tied up with this like like the the, the stringy things what, what are they called it's like this is this brown packing band I don't know I don't even know how this is called in German so um it's early in the morning, it's 5.30 a.m., um, excuse me. But all of that, like this design makes it so freaking beautiful. On the back, by the way, here you have a bit of text other than on these small ones, but it's all in Chinese, so I have no clue. The only thing that I can read is that this has an expiration date and it says um, uh, 19th of November, 2026. Personally, I don't care for expiration dates, so fuck it. Um, do you want to see how this in looks inside, by the way? Um, I have to just um, bend it over. Words, girl. Find your words. But here's what the palette looks inside. When I saw this for the very first time, I was like, oh. Uh. And then I kept on looking at it, and I was like, huh. <laughs> And then I saw swatches on some of Asian um, Instagrammers and I was like, oh my God. And then I lost track of this palette and I was reminded by my friend Diana from Blush Frenetic because she was like, look at this, this looks like up your vibe. And I was like, uh, maybe not. And seeing this now, I'm like, well, maybe it is. <laughs> I think this is a very interesting concept. First of all, the mattes are all different variations of purple moth thingies. All of these shimmers, like this, 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 and this, are transparent. I'm showing you the swatches in a second. This one, I hope you can see when I turn the palette a bit, this is a duochrome shifting from green to blue. When I saw the green on the pictures, I was like, this is so mismatched. I don't get this. I think this is a very wild choice. But seeing the shift now makes sense to me. And this is a cream shadow. But enough rambled. Here you have the swatches. I swatched it this time in order of the palette, like um, starting upper left and then I went row by row. Sometimes I do swatch mattes and then the shimmers, but um, for time reasons, I did this time everything in order. And here you have a close up. Hopefully you can see this shift in the green shade too, when I just try to <laughs> move my arm in different directions. I am actually living for the fact that all these shimmers, aside from the green blue shift, are transparent. And do you know what these remind me of? These little fuckers. These are two of the liquid eyeshadows from LH Cosmetics. This blue reminds me so much of this shade called Tees. And this, no, this one with the blue shift is literally this color. This is Blink. This is the newest one they released uh, last year. It's literally this one. And I'm not the liquid eyeshadow girl, but I love these from LH Cosmetics. And I think having this now in a pressed version makes me very happy because this shade here, by the way, they do not have names in the Mist Witch, so, which is a bit of a bummer. But this shade here, I do have in other palettes. I have it as a pressed, um, like regular shadow, like a baked version. I do have this in one of the Danessa Marks Chrome pots. I do have this in one of the glitter palettes too, so this is not very unique. But this transparent blue, for example, 
I don't have in this version. I only have the liquid one. And even these two look super similar, but they have a difference going on. And that makes me very happy. So let me just look at them once more because I think in the palette you can see it much better. This shade, which is uh, this one, has a true transparent white base going on while this shade, which is uh, this one, has kind of this mauve uh, purple lilac base, like more lilac than mauve, but, but you know what I mean. So I rambled now so much, you had to look at my undone potato face uh, all the time. So let's just create a beautiful, hopefully beautiful eye look. And uh, I kind of want to incorporate this cream because Diana actually when we talked about this palette told me that she had seen a review where somebody was saying that this cream is a lot like the putty shades from the Isamaya Industrial One and by touching it I want to disagree because this feels completely different. If you have seen my reviews on the Isamaya palettes, you know that I absolutely hate these putty shades and I'm more than happy that she didn't keep this in the other palettes. So I want to include this one definitely, maybe something like a holo eye, but with different holos on the upper and lower lid. I said it now two times, I think, in this video, but let's see where the creativity rolls. So I'm actually starting off strong by tapping directly into this black cream shade. Why did I do this? It's a cream shade, it's not a powder. And I apply this on the outer part and inner part, but it doesn't have to be like super tidy. Just I just wanna have black bases on these parts. I forgot to mention that the mattes here swatched and felt on the finger, very, very different to the mattes in those small quads. The quads felt very creamy, like, borderline being a cream shadow but way too powdery for being a green a cream shadow while in the mist witch palette here they felt very very dry they swatched kind of patchy like looking at this and this shade it was a bit of a mess to to do the swatches without having too many patches going on but Swatches don't tell the whole story, so the application is much more important to me than the swatch experience. And I'm now tapping into this dark lilac -y shade with a pointy brush. And I do start blending this directly in my crease, but also here on this outer V part. And then I take this through the complete crease to the other side of the black. I also blend a bit on top of this black shade just to give it a purpley tint. Not gonna lie, this is a bit of a um, hard blend. I feel like this builds up in a very weird way, but if you don't build it up, it kind of doesn't blend well. But um, we, can, we can correct that, so no problem here yet. So next up I take a fluffier brush and I tap into that light lilac up here. And I do use this on the outer edges so that I have a more of a toned down version of that dark purple, but also a good blend in the transition area. So I applied the tiniest amount of glitter glue on the lid and I'm now tapping into this um, blue shade, like the dark blue, not the shifty blue or the transparent pixelated blue. And I do apply this in the center. This is my center holo shade. The shimmers in this palette are also very different. I said in the look before that with the Liana quad that they do feel borderline like cream shadows. Like even the shimmers felt like this because they just, they spread it like warm butter on bread. It, or like warm butter on warm bread. That's how easy they went. These are different in formulation. They're a bit more, um, I don't wanna say flaky because they are not flaky, but they have a different texture going on, which can make them a bit flakier to apply, but you also get, in my opinion, a bit more dimension going on. They do rub a tiny bit also into the crease because when I do halos like that, I like to have a bit in the crease too. 
And I of course do not want to leave the inner and outer parts bare, so I'm doing like a halo of a halo, I don't know. But I'm now tapping into that second shade, the like transparent shimmer with lilac-y undertones. Oh, it's pretty hard to pick up actually because they're so different in this texture. And this will go, and this goes here into the inner part. Oh, this, this applies also very textured. This actually can be a good or a bad thing depending on your preference. When I know they apply like that, I don't have a problem, but it's a bit surprising actually because they swatch so different. I do also apply this, of course, here on this outer part of the lid. And then I just bring it to the blue so that I have a nice kind of blendy from this to this to this. The texture of this shimmer shade that I'm currently using reminds me a lot of the Odin's Eye Flake shades. If you want to have something to compare it with, it's definitely this. I also tap back into the blue and just go over my center again and on the edges to intensify that a bit more. Okay, for the lower lash line, I'm starting again with that cream shade here. And I do very precisely just press this here on the outer part and then also here on the inner part because we are filling that gap with something really interesting. I'm now tapping into this um, purpley shade, which is not really precise, uh, like this here. I hate when palettes do not have shade names. It, it drives me crazy. But I use this shade and I apply this on top of the black and then I use this to blend it out on both inner and outer parts, still leaving the center bare as much as possible. I mean, something will always be there, that's not a problem, but keep a bit bare, that helps. Because now for that center, I will use the green blue shifty shade and I use a flat, straight, very precise brush for that. And I also take the brush like this so that I can reach better underneath the lashes. And then I start tapping this on and I drag and swipe the brush downwards. For the inner corner, I'm using the blue shifty shade over here because this silvery shade will be my brow bone highlight. And I just apply it like that. And this time I'm not dragging it so far in the like lower lash line or um, the crease. I want to keep the focus on my halo that I created. Not gonna lie, I went a bit overboard with the highlight, but I just had to. And if you are wondering what the fuck is confetti sparkling on me, it is from uh, Odin's Eye from the Alva 2 palette, the shade Salamander. Okay, as I said, I want to use this shade down here for the brow bone highlight. Not that I'm not sparkly enough at this point, but ooh, so pretty. And I also for this look want to share the lipstick that I'm wearing because it's going to be a black one. This is definitely a must for a look like this, but don't worry, these do not translate into black. They turn into a um, dark purple, which I think is very fitting for this look. That's a vibe. Oh, I completely forgot to tell you what it is. It's the uh, Givenchy one in uh, the La Rouge Interdit Balm in the shade 10. And this is now the finished third look and also the end actually of this video. So let me just, oh my God, I, 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 I'm, I'm chaotic. Let me just recap that a bit. Um, so the first palette that we did was the circus palette with this beautiful, let's just say it's a Christmas color story. I love this. It, it is so small, which I actually love and hate at the same time because you know, I'm not a quad girl. But this is so, so beautiful, loving it. The other one was the Liana Quad and for whatever reason, this surprised me because I was not expecting to like it maybe even a bit more than Circus, even though Circus has a red in it. But this, so special, I'm, I'm all in for it. And maybe this year is the year where I'm turning into a mud green person. The Yaka palette is waiting for me. I give her a new chance. I'm very motivated now. And the last look, which is this one with the Mist Witch palette is just utterly stunning. 
I want to point out the fact that the packaging is super cheap. Like, this comes off here. Like, the, the, the paper that is glued onto the cardboard where the mirror is glued on, does come off. It looks beautiful, but um, this is a bit cheap in my opinion, and I don't like the fact that this happens, but you know, it's all about the inside. For some reason, I want to add this neon green liner, but I think this is a, too much. No, you know what? Skipping. Not, not doing this. In the end, I don't like the look then, and that would be very, very devastating. How do I feel about this after using every palette once? I want to point out that the quality in this newest palette, the Miss Witch, is very, very different to these tiny quads. And I also saw on their website that these tiny mini ones are actually now limited editions. So if they have still stock, you should grab them. Actually, if you want to try the brand, I would rather say go for one of the minis and not for the Mist Witch, depending on what you like. I think the minis are just, they are just much more special than the Mist Witch. Although I like the look that I created with Mist Witch much more. Oh my God, that's a tongue twister. But that comes down to the fact, first of all, I love purples, I love black, and I love sparkly things. So color story-wise, this is definitely the better one. But quality-wise, I like the quality in the minis a bit more, especially the mattes. I don't have a problem with powdery dry mattes because they blend very easy. But um, application-wise, I actually had a better feeling with the minis. So if you want to grab something from Shall We Makeup, I'm happy to tell you that I'm actually affiliated with them. But I bought all of them myself and actually not on the website. I bought them um, from Monolith Shop. What I can offer you is that you can get a 10% discount with my code Ella Kinkley on the website so that you can get something from them. They have a pretty nice collection. I went through the website, what other things they had, and I'm, I'm actually very intrigued to try more. I saw on Instagram, just a little warning or spoiler or disclaimer, whatever, that they had some trouble with shipping lately because the owner, I mean, it's still an indie brand. And she is, if I understood that correctly, the person who actually also ships out everything and packs everything by hand. So there was a bit of a delay going on. But yeah, how do you feel about this? What was your favorite look? What is a palette that you would choose? If you choose to buy something from the website, the code and the affiliate link are in the description box down below. And if you use them, I get a small commission. That's literally the definition of affiliate things. So thank you for your support if you do this. And if you use one of them or if you already have them and have done a look, then please tag me because I really want to see what you created with these beauties. So thank you for watching and I hope I can see you in the next one.